Welcome to RVing in New England, the nation's only forum that puts you on stage with some of the biggest names in the RV industry. And now your hosts, John DiPietro and Bob Zagami. Hello once again, everyone. Welcome to RVing in New England. I'm John DiPietro. Must He's be Bob. what must be Wednesday night. He's I'm Bob Sagami. And, and the reason have the reason great... I have wait a minute. The reason yeah. I have my iPods in tonight, it is torrential rain pounding on the roof. So I hope you cannot hear it. Not but I'm only, sure if you did, John will tell me. Not only is it rain there, it is raining in it's stormy Cape Cod. And um, we should tell people that our show is brought to you tonight. And every week by Lee's Auto and RV Ranch. And generally, this is about the time Zagami presses another button. We want to thank Bob Zagami and Nervda for inviting us to sponsor their fall into winter dealership sponsor program. And we want to introduce ourselves. This is Brian and the sales team here at Lee's Auto and RV Ranch. We want to welcome all the Nervda members to come visit us and check out our great operation. We have a tremendous amount of inventory from small teardrops to Class A motorhomes. And also we want to introduce you to our service department where we do full mechanical repair and body work, floors, paint work, custom paint work on uh, anything from Class A diesel pushers to small motorhomes. We want to invite everybody down to come say hello. We're family owned and operated here to help you and serve there they yep. go i i love this new sponsor i love all our sponsors but we love uh lee's auto and rv ranch it's a family-owned business uh they're a small dealer in new england one location personal service a lot of friendly things but the one thing and i mentioned it lots of times is one of the great things about lee's auto and rv ranch is not only can you buy the rv there but you can actually buy a pre-owned truck so you can buy a truck and a trailer combination all in one place and but more importantly oh i don't know if they still have it since covid because i haven't been there in a while i got to get back there they had a popcorn machine right by gracie's desk and when you walk in that place it smells like the old walmarts or the movie theater (laughs) that popcorn smell so i don't know brian brian let us know if you still have that uh, popcorn machine because popcorn brings people in. Well, I don't, I don't know. He, he, he may have taken it to uh, Alaska with uh, him and Faith and, and Gracie, because when I went in about a month ago to see Stephanie, there was no smell of con- popcorn. There was no oh, popcorn well, machine around. So it well, may be gone. They because they knew you would uh, you know, break out the Jack Daniels and have some popcorn and Jack Daniels. Speaking of Jack Daniels, um, yes, you got anything there with you tonight? Right here. Okay. Right there. Now, speaking right there. of observant people, I've got my water here. Mm-hmm. Okay. But I'm told that our guest tonight referred to you as are you the Jack Daniels guy or the other guy? That that is true. When I was talking to uh, Eric this morning and he looked at some of our work, he said, Are you? He said just that. Are you the Jack Daniels guy or are you the other guy? Or the young so, guy. So from now on, you will always be known as the other guy. And that, from now it, on, you see, will that's how, always that's be known how as the guy who drinks while he's working. Well, <laughs> this, this isn't work. This is fun. If, it, okay. if I had to make it work, I, I couldn't do it. Hey, I, I want, I want to I We're going to talk about electric bikes tonight. But we the thing that first. makes it fun. Here's the thing that makes it fun is... The, our live studio audience. Let's see who we got here. We got Don. A lot of Pat comments Hall. already. Look at that. Look at Good him. evening from Athens, Texas on time. That's got to be Don, that's Don Hawes, yeah? Yep. Jerry Plant. Hello from Stormy Cape Cod. Well, Jerry, you better get rid of the storms because I will be there on Friday from 9 to noon that's, as part that's, of their fall weekend. Let's 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 expand on that. For those of you who have not met John DePedro in person, who not received his autograph or had a chance to take your selfie with him, 
He will be there Friday, not Saturday, Friday from noon Friday. to 12 doing doing uh, videos for Majors RV Service Center. No, what? Not noon, not noon to 12. Uh, nine, nine, to 12. To, nine to noon. Nine to <laughs> yeah, noon. Nine to yeah, we, get, we get to figure it out. You'll show up and it'll be, you'll show up and it'll be all over. So when you get to, when you go down to see David and Jeff and Jill and Jerry and Chris and Liz, st stop in and say hello to, to Petro. He'll be he'll be the guy taking videos. I'll be taking or, videos, or, or he'll be the guy talking. I can guarantee. And I can I'll, guarantee you know what? That. I, hey, I've even had Jerry on a couple of times. Jerry's done a couple of features for us when we do our yeah. videos. Yep. There and always nice to have Jerry around. Frank Kate says I'm here uh, on time this week. I and know. Eric, if you're listening now, you see the references to being on time. Yeah. Okay. There you go. All right. Now look at check out Bill Sell. Took us five minutes to get to the Jack Daniels. Now, it before, took five. Before we jump yeah. too, before we jump too far. No, <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Special note to Bill Sell. He's been drinking since five o'clock when we did another show. <laughs> Oh. Well, I well, I, I got to I want to shout out to Mr. Sell because let me get rid of the other comment there. It was through Bill Sell who introduced us to Eric Peterson for tonight's show. I called him up and said, you know, we haven't done a an e bike show for a while, and uh, Bill, of course, has the uh, Electric Bike Expo with Ray Verheist that they take around the country. He's one of the more knowledgeable guys but he's, he's a show promoter I've, I've worked with bill for over 20 years with computer shows before i got into the rv so thank you very much mr sell for uh putting us in touch with eric because it's going to be a great show but bob the thing you haven't but, yet said about bill is that he is our producer extraordinaire when we're on the road or when right. you're on we're not when the show. We bill can't is do the show. all the right buttons all the ones that yeah. you don't press correctly bill does well, he doesn't. He doesn't better than me. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. So I'll Walter like that. is in Florida, and um, maybe we can get. Well, Walter came on with us last week when they were prepping for it. I think. Right. Yeah. 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 So well, Walter, why don't, why don't, is, Audrey why don't we... is happy because Pirate Land is open again. Okay. As is. Uh... Ocean Lakes, Ocean Lakes, and we think oh. Lakewood is open, and Myrtle yeah. Myrtle Beach Travel Park uh, had some significant damage, but they get, they actually they, they their customers were so great after the hurricane stopped, all the customers got out of their RVs, grabbed a rake and a shovel, and, and helped the whole day cleaning up the park. Yeah, you know what I find interesting, Bob, the three women that we've had here that that have signed on and um, made comments, they all have three names. Audrey Foley, Egan, Monica Mahler, McGillicuddy, Maria Galante Moore. And the men only have two names. Yeah, that's terrible. I don't know. That's terrible. Hello from Chili Hubbardston. Dante, I'll get you that material. I haven't forgotten you. Reigning okay. Southern New Hampshire. Mark Polk joins us from North Carolina. Mark Polk, and, RB, RB Education 101. We'll have to yeah. introduce him to... Eric, Mark, pay pay attention. Get get your lovely wife Dawn on the program here. We got some uh, very interesting electric bike news. Yep. So Bernie you Collins you keep you keep friend. looking at that, and uh, we should bring our guest up so that we don't control yep. the whole thing. So, ladies yep. and gentlemen, meet Eric Peterson from Go Cycle. And uh, hello, everybody. Should Eric. I say Eric Allen Peterson? Would that be would that be more appropriate? Oh, that, I can throw oh, the that. third name in there. Hell, hell yeah! You have a, <laughs> you have a third name. Um, Wasn't there a Peterson that was on My Three Sons or uh, Father Knows Best? Or Paul we're going to have to leave that to the audience. I'm not familiar. I was yeah, downstairs I earlier grabbing some popcorn at our popcorn machine. You were making me hungry as oh. I was waiting to come on board. So <laughs> Bill Sell, you know Bill Sell. It took five minutes to get to the Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels guy or Chef Boy RD guy? <laughs> e bike. I love them. And yeah. waiting for the rain to leave and the temps to go back so I can do my winterizing trailer project. Frank, Frank just, Kate, call, yeah. just call up um, Trick. What the heck's his name? Ryan Hadley. <laughs> Ryan. No, he's he, no Frank's down the Cape. He can drive over to Majors. Oh, that's right. And, and they have that special winterizing special this weekend. Yeah, Frank, if you go over Saturday, you can get uh, John's autograph. 
Yeah. I, mean, I tell is you that what, from nine to noon, or is that from noon to three? No, that no. Well, no Bob well, we said we figured it out. We got, we got to, to figure noon. it out. All right. In fact, Frank, if you want, you could you could actually get a video of a first for the RV industry. You could have DePetro take his Sharpie and personally autograph your Airstream. Now, how many other people are going to drive around with a DePetro? He could he could write John DePetro Chef Boy RD on it, and uh, you know that that would be kind of unique. So. That's, you'll have to talk to Jeff and make sure they have some. Uh, oh, Mr. Squire guy to all. That's a dirty word, winterized. Dante, New England roof at Harvey. I know what that means. I know, but reality is setting in. Monica, LOL, Bill Sell, two of you can be the single name people. Sagami and the picture. Yeah, like, like we're like uh, Dolly and Kenny and, oh, better, Jack and Chef. There you go, Bill. Yeah, you haven't figured it. Haven't figured it out. Yeah, haven't figured that out. Eric, tell us how you got into this business, who you are, a little bit of your background, and and what gets you excited about the e-bike business. Uh, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, let's start off with that. Um, I'm Eric Peterson. I work with GoCycle. I've been at the company here just coming up on three years uh, later this year. Uh, you know, we talked a little bit earlier. My background is a little bit eclectic. I, I'm a a recovering <clears throat> accountant from back in the day and, and ended up going through a, a career in store management at Target and marketing and doing some other things. And uh, three years ago or so, I was sitting around a, a campfire, a bonfire with some uh, parents of my, our son, his uh, grade school. And we uh, were talking about what we were going to do in retirement. And I had been a camper, an RV uh, user all my life. And user. I had met user yes exactly that, owner it has owner and user it has um, illegal connotations to it though yes i i understand <laughs> uh and and i just explained that my wife and i were talking about um you know van life as a retirement strategy just you know being able to get into a sprinter and drive around the country and one of the other attendees said hey i'm looking for someone that's interested in driving a van uh, to trade shows to help sell this cool electric bike that we've got would you be interested in doing that and so you know here we are you know two and a half years later sixty-six thousand miles on the company sprinter um through two COVID years actually which is is the most impressive piece uh and and now i'm i'm working with what we think is you know one of the coolest electric bikes in the uh, in the market, sure, it looks cool. Hey, is that hey. a photo behind you, or is that a is that a virtual wall? Because nobody has their room that clean and neat. Yes, that's a photo. That is that's a photo on a TV screen. So, no, no, no. I mean that that dresser back there, that hutch. Or oh, this? No, that's, oh, that's real. Oh. Yeah, well, wow. how, come okay. how come there's nothing on it? Yeah, uh, just preparing it. It's you know, take away the clutter for the video. Okay. So, Eric. Uh, so, 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 John, he's obviously not as normal as we thought he was. Hold on. I'm sorry. Hold on. Uh, that, see, that's the accountant part that comes out. So, right now, somewhere. You can't see what's on the other side of the camera where I've moved. Somewhere up. to the either side of that thing, there is a messy room. It's on. It's behind. It's in front of okay. me, actually. It's well, welcome the to the club. Now we like yeah. you. Thank you. Hey, exactly. Eric, remember, remember what we said to you before we uh, started the show? <laughs> what? About ap apologies. It only took Oh, oh yes. Yes. It only took us seven minutes and 13 seconds for Jim Roy to apologize. He owns uh, Silver Moose Restorations up in Monmouth, Maine. Does restorations on Airstream trailers. Does them incredibly well. So, And, and Jim, I'll bet you've never had any, any unless they asked you. I mean, I, I could see somebody asking Jim Roy to autograph their Airstream after he completely restores them. But I'm not sure anybody would want DePetro to autograph their Airstream. I can put it on the side of the airstream in indelible magic marker. It would yep. it would be the John DePietro limited edition. It would be limited to one. There you go. That, and Zagami, yes. I'm a little concerned. My picture hasn't been on the screen. And there we go. Sorry, <laughs> I, I was I was I was kind of liking that that layout, uh, but I suppose we should put you up there every once in a while. Every once in a while, <laughs> let everybody yeah. know who's here. Yeah. So, Eric, tell us. Well, let me tell you first. You tell me. When we were at uh, Bob, um, correct me if I'm wrong in this, but when we were at the Alliance event back in May, mm -hmm. April or May. Yep. 
out in Elkhart, I would say that about every third RV had some type of electric vehicle or some type of conveyance um, to get around. Bike or, or electric scooters. And, yeah. and, you, and you're right. And, and this was the first year we, we, we MC their annual rally the last two years. And well, I MC it. Sagami just comes around for the. I get, I, I get to play Ed McMahon. Right. He, he can be Johnny Carson. Mark but Pope. we did know it was, it was such an obvious, and that was what got me kind of thinking we should do another e-bike show uh, because it had been a while, but there was a tremendous usage of e-bikes at this rally. And, and a lot of these are full-timers and certainly people that make significant investments in their, in their RVs. So I thought, let's get, a, let's get the take from somebody who is relatively unknown. Uh, it's not the first name people think of. So give us a little bit about the philosophy behind, I'm intrigued with a couple of things, the, the technology and the, the engineering, and one could say that they're both the same, but I could argue either, either side of that. But uh, tell us a little bit about Go Cycle. Sure. Um, the first thing to notice is that it, it, it's, a, it's a bicycle. That's what we try and tell people is that that it was designed from the ground up to be a, a great riding bicycle first and foremost. Um, it, it doesn't look like a lot of people have, have seen um, a bike before, but that was because it was a clean sheet design from uh, an automotive designer that had been working with McLaren Automotives and composite materials and engineering on the F1 side. And, and so he basically said, yes. It's also the first bike that was designed to drive in your house. As that prior picture just showed. Yeah, you can. Yes, it does. Well, that, that is one of the beauties. We talked about it a little bit earlier from a security perspective. The most secure way to store your bike is to bring it with you. And when you've got a lightweight, clean bike, you can do that. You know, the bike right there, I, I joked earlier that it weighs about four and a half gallons of water. So that bike is about 37 pounds. Um, and so it's lightweight, it's clean, it's easy to live with. But it was designed from the ground up to be ridden like a like a bicycle. Um, and it's, it's also designed as an electric bike. So the motor is in the front wheel. Um, we've got a chain, an actual chain that's hidden in the clean drive. You can see there, um, the clean drive protects the chain. It protects the rider. Uh, in the case of, of the RV world, it would protect the inside of your rig. So you're not dripping grease or any, any, um, dirt. Uh, it just makes it really clean and easy to live with. You can wipe it down and uh, fold it up in a matter of 10 seconds and bring it with you. Uh, front wheel drive. It's, it's, we say, I like to say it's two wheel drive. Yes. The motor is in the front and you pedal the back. So that's, it's, it's two wheel drive and oh, it's really? got, tra it's got traction control. So if your front wheel spins a little bit faster than your rear wheel, uh, the, the front motor will actually cut out um, so that you don't uh, experience that slippage. Uh, you know, we've got uh, type one or a type two. So that bike that you see there, it has a 500 watt front hub motor. It has a throttle. Um, the battery is actually in the, the white down tube that says go cycle on it. Um, it's actually inside the bike. Uh, the battery can be charged in the bike. Uh, you don't have to take it out to charge. You can if you choose to. Yeah. Um, but it's got, you see, there's a little bit of a suspension. So, you know, for people of a certain age, where it gets a little, uh, the road gets a little rough. You know, I've ridden down uh, in the French Quarter down in New Orleans, and those roads aren't exactly. Uh, yeah. I smooth. can't walk down. I can't walk down them. Never mind to ride a bike down them. Correct, and and so it, it it just gives you a little bit of a suspension that kind of takes the edge off. Uh, we've got some. We've got silica infused into the tires for traction. Um, so it's it's it, it's a really purpose built easy to leave, live with, clean, fun to ride bike. Did you mention this? That, that it was foldable? I, that it's foldable. I have not. That's, and that's the other thing. It's, it's, it's the bike folds in a matter of 10 seconds. So you've got a full, a great riding full size um, bike that folds into a matter of 10 seconds that you can fold up and you can store uh, inside your RV. We've got a great travel case that, that you can fold up and, and store it in the RV. Um, actually I, I was, I had said this, I shared this a little bit earlier on my last trip. I'd stopped in Texas with, a a, a couple that owned a, a Winnebago rebel and they wanted to actually test it to see if the bike folded in the travel case fit underneath the bed. And once it, 
once we were able to slide it right in underneath for them, that was yep. that was what they needed to know. And that's the best security. You don't have to to worry about it hanging off the rear end of your vehicle. Um, it's safe and secure with you in the car. You know, you're so correct on that because the other thing with um, especially electric bikes with the weight when they're on a carrier, you never know. Well, two things. You never know a bump in the road and the weight that they can project, whether they're going to go flying off or take the whole um, carrier off from the, from the hitch. But yet two other things are weather and theft. So I think what you've done is taking care of both of those issues by having them able to come into the unit with you. It's, it's, you know, we talk about, uh, we talked about this earlier, the, the, the thing, the two things that there, you, you are always fighting with in RVs are uh, space and weight. And, you know, two, um, there are a lot of great uh, electric bikes out there. Um, not, a, not many of them weigh, not any of them weigh 37 pounds. And so if you're looking at 50, 60 pounds, and you've got two of them, suddenly you're at 110, 120 pounds, plus the weight of the rack. Right. And, you know, in some of these class B's, you're looking at, you know, a total of 850 pounds of cargo carrying capacity. So you're, you know, 18, 19% of your cargo carrying capacity is basically hanging on the back of your rig. Hmm. Um, and plus so the other with, thing is, excuse me for one second. Um, yeah. uh, rig cargo capacity. It was a good off the back, yeah. it, was, it was good. Too bad we it didn't was hear good. It. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so Monica, Monica, the the to answer Monica's question, you know, we've got uh, two different battery ranges. We've got a, a, a G4 lineup, which has a, a roughly a 40 mile range, and then we've got the G4i and the I plus, which are um, the I plus is behind us. That's got a 50 mile range. And realistically, when I say it was designed to be ridden like a bike, I say that because at 37 pounds, you can ride it like a bike without the electric assist, without the motor assist. And that's a big, that's a big oh, thing. You, that, so even that allows battery, you, yes, that allows you to extend your range as far as you're able to, to uh, ride. All right, Monica asked, uh, asked that question, how, how far does a charge take you? Yep. And that's, that's the 40 or 50 mile range, but, and, and that's all, you know, basically it, it's dependent on what ride modes you have. Uh, an earlier commenter had commented on the app and we've got, you know, four built in ride modes that, that give you um, an infinite level of assist because you, would, can <clears throat> you can basically dial that in any way you want. That, um, that you would be, help. that would be our resident engineer, Eric. See, okay. he, he already as soon as see Welcome. he reads the notice. Oh, there we go. He already, he's oh. already done. Yeah, he, he's already done his homework before the show. He's checked out your website. He's I appreciate out that. The spec. No, no, we we love it. You know, you know, if somebody asks a question and as brilliant as John and I are, if we don't know the answer, Walter will pop it up in about ten seconds. And there you go. Done, yeah. yeah. Hey, Eric. The other thing that I was going to say is, the other thing is, if you have two e-bikes and have a rack in the back you could be paying up to a thousand dollars for that rack that is correct and um you know and, and there are some that are even a little bit more than that but that's right. that is correct you know right. there's it, it's it's funny I, I love the comments you know things that that i i am so used to talking about the bike that sometimes i take for granted things like you can't see it from this picture but the wheels are single-sided so you can change a flat tire without removing the wheels from the bike so it's got a single-sided fork and a single-sided rear end. What? So you don't need to take the wheels off if you get a flat. Um, it's a class, uh, it can be a class one or a class two bike. It's, it's got a throttle that you can be, that basically can be turned off in the firmware settings that we have. So right. um, I, you can make I, that, that choice. I have to ask, what the hell's a class two or a class three when it refers to a bike? Okay, so so in the U.S., we have three different classes of electric bikes, class one, class two, class three. Class one and class two are basically a 20 mile an hour speed limit, uh, motor limit, I should say. The difference is basically, do you have a throttle or not? A class yeah. two has a throttle, and basically a throttle is exactly what it says it is. 
you can activate the motor without pedaling the bike. Um, we've got, so with our firmware, you can set it up as a class one, with is, which is no throttle, or a class two, um, which is a throttled version. Um, but those limit the motor to 20 miles an hour. A class three takes the bike up to 28 miles an hour and doesn't have a throttle. So there's a little bit of a difference. And some states, some states regulate to class one, some states say class two, some states, you may get some places that say no electric bikes, uh, no motorized vehicles yeah. on the path. Um, the one thing I'll say is with this, you really can't see where the motor is and you can't hear the motor. You just know that somebody's riding relatively effortlessly. Or, I want to or, go back to one of Walter's comments, then, then I want to pop up a picture. He likes that it has two seat posts. Yes. And on your, on your site, I think this is, yeah, you call it, you call it one size fits all. So explain that, that theory and, and why that's important. In the, in the bike world, um, in the traditional bike world, you're used to seeing frame sizes, uh, small, medium, large, based on your step over height. You know, how, where are your pedal, where are your feet? Um, where does the top tube hit you uh, when you step over the bike? Um, what we've got is a modified step through, which is great for people um, as, as they get older. It's, it's not, it, it doesn't require you to throw your leg over the seat. But basically what you see in the design is um, as the seat post gets longer and the seat gets taller, um, you actually maintain the riding position at a, at a kind of an upright, easy to, easy to maneuver riding position. You're not bent over like you would be on a traditional drop bar or flat bar. And what we and legs, like said is that with that second saddle post, I'm sorry. And your legs aren't bent as much. Correct. With that, with that second saddle post, you know, it's all, we say four foot eight to six foot four. That having been said, I've actually had someone on our bike that was six foot eight. And, and it's, 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 I'm six foot three and I ride it and love it. My wife is five foot nine. She rides the same bike. We've got friends that are five foot two. They ride the same size frame. So you don't have to worry about, oh, I can't ride that because that's my that's my husband's bike and he's got the taller size frame. Basically, right. if, as long if you, as you've got that seat post, you can go back and forth riding right. if the you same get, bike. If you get stuck where you can only take one with you, which one do you take? Or if you're going to go out on a bike. Uh, Jim has an interesting question. Jim owns New England RV roof and does outstanding flex armor uh, sure. roofing for RVers. Um, does it recharge when you pedal? It does not. It, we don't have any regenerative. That's, you know, we talked about it a little bit earlier, but for us, really, weight is key. And we're doing everything that we can to take every gram. I mean, it, it's, it's expensive to develop bikes to take grams off of, off of the bikes. And, and so that's not something where there's been a, a weight benefit trade off at this point. And that's something that we haven't, haven't looked into yet. Hmm. Walter, hey, Walter, another another good one from Walter. He, he's certainly done his homework this week. Um, talk about that, you know, because commuters now, um, especially with public transportation, the issues, some of the dangers sure. of public transportation. You you take your bike to work, and it will fit on the most normal desk, right? Yep, it's it's when it's folded, it's it's. Um just under 30 inches tall, I believe. It, it folds right under, my saddle post is a little taller. Uh, one of the things we talk about is the fact that it's the ultimate form of security is bringing the bike with you where you are. So let's say you're at an RV park, you're stopped and you wanna ride into town and go to the coffee shop, go to the restaurant, do whatever. You can fold the bike up and in 10 seconds, you can bring it in with you and you can, leak, and you can keep it with you. That's the ultimate form of security. Um, you know, when I was in San Diego uh, a couple of weeks ago at a trade show, we would get done at the convention center and then we'd get on our bikes and ride up to Little Italy and, and, and find a nice restaurant, fold up the bikes and, and wheel them and sit them right next to us. And it's, and it's the fact that there isn't a chain and there isn't a derailleur and there isn't um, that extra, those extra things hanging off the bike makes it 
you know, easily acceptable. And it folds into a nice narrow spot and it sits right at the table next to us. So um, Eric, if there's no, if there's no chain um, and why don't you do this, mull this question and Bob, we've got to take a break right now. Um, I'll set it up. Break in, which, which we already, for, which we always forget to do. Um, right. Tell us after the break, what propels the bike? It must be some type of direct drive. There is a chain. There is a chain, but I can. I'll, I'll explain it. I'll explain my point after the break. Okay. So, if I can do you this. Say a prayer right now that Zagami gets this right. Uh oh. They changed. They changed one of the settings. They changed sharing screen to present screen. So let me see. Now he's blaming the program. Well, I, so, I always blame. I always blame the program when I right. screw up. But you can't blame just... me because I'm a hundred miles away without. Without any knowledge of this whatsoever. Oh, I start from the beginning. Okay, I liked where that was going. So oh, let me cool. let me stop sharing. And if and you're wondering me... if the people were driving on the wrong side of the road, it's a British company, right, Eric? It is based in the UK. Based in the UK, so they drive differently. Yes, yeah. we actually we actually have a, a front brake left and a front brake right, just so <laughs> those so so people in their in their user areas can can. Are, are used to it so yes the front brake right is for the uk folks so okay let me let me quickly do our sponsors commercial and see if i can do two of these in a row without screwing up this this could be a challenge i recognize Miracles that happen every day i recognize that Boom. in the meantime i'll carry the show like i have been for most of the show uh, walter loves london Audrey thinks it's pretty cool. Walter, our resident engineer, says regenerative braking equals extra weight, cost, and heat in the battery. Is that right, Eric? It does. Yep. Okay. In the community path of Lynn, a converted railway roadbed restricts motorized vehicles. Yeah, I think, you know what? I don't... You know, there was talk of the same thing on the Cape Cod Rail Trail, but... I think that what, what it really more means mopeds and, and people that are, you know, flying down the street. Um, my guess is that the National Park Service and whatever jurisdiction has that particular program, if you're not exhibiting crazy behavior, my guess is that I don't think they're going to hassle you. And you All can right, always gotta, say, okay, here we go. You've got to cut it. Boom, boom, boom. Everyone knows the end of season is the best time to buy an RV. Do it at Lee's RV in Ellington, where there's no shortage of new and pre-owned units. Lee's has more travel trailers, toy haulers, fifth wheels, mini motorhomes, and ultra lightweight teardrops. Plus, they're all on sale and ready for immediate delivery. Be camping this weekend. Everyone loves Lee's because they are family owned. Deal direct with the owners with no corporate red tape. Lee's Auto and RV Ranch in Ellington. On the web, it's leesautoandrv.com. Dot com. Dot com. All right. Dot com. There we go. All right. Stop the screen. Wow. And we have some good okay. comments. There we go. That. Yeah, let's let's go. Yes, Eric, you want to pick out a couple of these yourself and uh, yep. answer them? Uh, yeah. We've got, what's the weight limit? The weight limit on there is uh, rider in gear is 250 pounds. I just make it. 
Well, I'll tell you, I, I, <laughs> you know, but I, the great, the best way to lose the weight is to ride the bike. That's the, that's what we tell people is, is the best way is that you will lose because you're going to, because you'll be on your bike more, you'll enjoy it more. I, yep. I talked about yeah, the but, fact that it, it, it removes years. It makes you feel like a kid again because yeah, look you can at, look go faster ask, and further. Look at who asked the question. He could him, he could carry Dawn on his shoulders, and the two of them wouldn't come to 250 pounds. Well, he might get more than 40 mile range then, you know, ah. because the range is all going to be dependent on how heavy the rider is as well. No, see, here's the other thing with Mark Polk. You got to understand, he's got a couple. I think a, I think two, at least two big dogs, and Three. he would hook the dogs up to the front and have them pull the bike and him and Dawn so that he wouldn't be using any battery power. Yep. That would be, you know, you just, you just pissed off Dawn because that would be dog cruelty. So I, if, if she's not on, I suspect that Mark will come to her defense real quick. So my guess Dawn doesn't go to the Iditarod. <laughs> Polk, Polk so, says he weighs 220. Oh. Hey, Mark, I, I don't want to hurt your feelings, Mark. That's right about where I am. Jeez. That's a hundred kilo. That's a hundred ki That's a hundred kilos. So that's 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 two twenty. Right Restricted. So, right. Ed, Ed, Ed asked. Yeah, Ed had asked about um, electric mountain electric mountain bikes and, and things like that. I, we're not as familiar with that. I I, I experience that as I um, work with uh, my various reselling partners throughout the country, and in laws laws are starting to move to open up and remove and, and kind of ease the restrictions on electric bikes. One of the things is what people are realizing is that you want to get people more active, you know, with the COVID um, situation a couple of years ago, biking was the only, was, was one of the only socially acceptable forms of, of fitness and exercise. And what we've realized is that more people on bikes is better. And, and, you know, that is, there's more electric bikes sold, you know, when it comes to electric vehicle sales, there's more electric bikes sold than electric cars. Um, and that's, and, and, and the industry is, is starting to understand that we have to work together with our partners, whether that be the rails to trails folks or the city planners, or, you know, even with corporations, you know, it, you see incentives to purchase but realistically, to, to really change the behavior, you need to incent the use utilization. So working with companies to incent their employees to, to bike to work, uh, whatever, that, whatever that looks like. There's a cycle to work scheme in the UK uh, that, that our company is a part of. And it's really, you know, I find that, you know, I've got a nine mile commute uh, to drive would take 15 minutes and to, to use my bike on, on a combination of um, dedicated street path dedicated bike path and then limestone trails is is at 30 minutes so it's it's an extra 30 minutes a day and i get the exercise and i'm not on the freeway and it's it's just i find my mood better when i've spent that extra time and um on the bike doing that now in minnesota like the winterization questions i'm waiting for the snow here in minnesota but it's it's it is really a matter of you know how cold am i willing to accept you, you mentioned incentivized and, and the government's throwing money all around for buying electric cars when we're not ready for electric cars. Corporations are helping with that also. Do you see any effort, uh, hopefully not at the government level, but uh, maybe at the at the local level, local states make their own rules where they would have an incentive program for people buying electric bikes? Yes, actually, there are several. You know, uh, I saw you. We have somebody here from Texas, the city of Austin, Texas. Um, actually, the electric utility in Austin has has an uh, e-bike purchase program. The city of Denver really has has really embraced it. Um, they've got uh, a great program that they're incenting their residents. You know, they're dedicating trails They're They you can bike from the east side in Aurora all the way up to Boulder and not touch a city street. Um, oh. They're and they're really they're really incenting that um, places like the University of Kentucky um, has a program where if you basically sell the university back your parking permit for two years, you would get a benefit at a local bike shop. And again, those are all purchase um, benefits. And, you know, the next step, the holy grail is to get to the utilization piece. And so, um, you know, I feel like 
in 2023, one of the things I want to work on is how can we work with HR uh, groups to to incent that behavior? Um, because oh. it's it's to be able to use it and, and maintain that healthy lifestyle is great. A good friend, uh, Jesse Brissett, is on with us tonight, and he brings up a point. He says, uh, let's work on campgrounds before we work on commuting back and forth to work. And a lot of campgrounds are, well, they've always had regular bike rentals. And we've seen some movement uh, towards electric bikes and, and renting them. Uh, what yep. are you seeing in the marketplace? There is. Um, bike shops are renting them. Um, hotels have have brought in some electric bikes, not necessarily ours, but other electric bikes. Um, we've got actually a caravan partner in the UK, uh, so an RV uh, partner in the UK that um, actually will rent you a go cycle when you went when you rent one of their caravans. Um, because utilization, and, and this is one of the things that we talk about it is, you know, our goal is to get as many bums on bikes as we can. We want you to experience it and ride it. And, and, and RV purchases, you know, at least in my, in my life and in my experience, it's one of the challenges is I want to get out and use it the way that I would use it before I know whether the, the water tank in this place is right or whether I prefer this feature or that feature. And, and, and it's great to be able to use it. And the more that you can, the better. I should mention Jesse is one of the top sales reps at Camping World out in West Hatfield, Mass. Okay. And he, you know, he's a good friend of the show. Uh, I, pa I passed a very large Camping World on my way uh, back from Albert Lee this afternoon down in Lakeville, Minnesota. So, well, they've got, they've got, how many you got now, Jesse? 170 or? They're everywhere now. They're, they are everywhere. And <clears throat> Jesse's up there That's in Western Mass. Um, I just saw something from Walter again. Yeah, Walter says, and he's with uh, Dell Technologies. Our health program has a $500 health health club, and you can use it towards a bike. That, that's, it's, no, it, yeah. it's, it, and it's an awareness thing. And it's a matter of thinking of that as 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 a viable alternative. How can I use that in, in my cafeteria plan uh, and things like that? And, and, you know, we, we talk about, you know, van life and things like that and, and, and to be able to pull into a site and pull out a bike and have it ready to ride in, in a matter of 15 seconds and then off you go. You know, you, you're not worried about taking down your, your camper and, and, and heading off. You can get to where you want to go um, on a bike. You know, we've got a full set of accessories. We've got a front pannier. You can fit a full uh, grocery bag in that pannier. You can also fit a, you know, 12 pack of whatever beverage of choice you might want to put in there. Uh, we've got a luggage rack that you can throw on the back with panniers as well. You know, I was joking a little bit with Bob um, earlier that our, our first foray into the U.S. was uh, in the marine market, you know, through the Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show. And I joke that, you know, there's never been a marina that's been built at the t there's never a marina at the top of a hill. They're always at the bottom of a hill. And if you want to get out of the marina, you need to go up the hill. And that's where the e-bike when you're going up the hill really helps. Yeah. Eric, Walter, do you mind do you mind if I put your email address? How do people Absolutely. Okay. I'm not I'm not throwing you off, but I just realized I had made up some banners that I probably it's really it's use. A really exotic. It's really exotic. It's a it's a tough yeah. one to remember. I tell you, it must have taken a long time to figure that one out. I know. I'm yeah. Eric, so as you can it, tell, I was the first Eric at the company. Is the bike um, available at the retail level, or is it all done online, direct to consumer? It's 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 a combination, really. Omnichannel is is the strategy that that most companies need to pursue now, because you, realistically, we need to be where our buyers are, where there are where where there is interest. And you know, we also know that over sixty percent of the people that end up buying a Go Cycle want to take a test ride before they ride it. You wouldn't, you know, it's it's a matter of especially when they they've never seen it before it's you know, let's get you on it let's you know we'll, we want you to ride this bike we want you to ride some of the other bikes that are out there so that you have a point of comparison you're happier with your purchase when that happens and so we do have resellers uh, we have showroom partners throughout the country and then we're also available at, at gocycle.com 
Hmm. If we, no. uh, what, you know, if we've got 35 dealers in Nervda in the six New England states, so you're the business development manager. So if one of our dealers wants more information, you'd be the go-to guy for that also? They can, they can, they can reach out to me and I'll get them in touch with our uh, East Coast rep who is based out of uh, Nashua, uh, New Hampshire. Um, and okay. she, Jerry would be happy to talk to them, yes. Okay, great. Hey, Eric, okay. as I look at that picture behind you, is that a shock absorber? Between that is. The... Okay, so that gives you... Let's, let me there. let me go right there. That's yep, yeah. yep, exactly. That what you see coming. Uh, uh, we'll do that again. Here we go. Right there. Right That's there. A, yeah. there. Right there. Yep. Yeah. That's our shock. There's a there's about 25 millimeters, roughly an inch of travel uh, that just kind of takes the edge off, um, and it's attached to the clean drive. And what I was starting to say earlier, you had asked about the chain. Oh, yeah. There is a standard chain in the bike. So you you've got uh, you pedal. It's an eight-speed chain. There's a three-speed Shimano um, rear hub. So it's a three-speed bike uh, on the rear end that you can pedal, and there is a chain. But when I had said that you don't see it, it's because it's fully enclosed in the clean drive cover, and that protects the chain, that protects the rider, that okay. protects the surroundings. So well, you know, you, you, talk, you talk about clean, and, and again, I go back to my earlier comment. The engineering... You know, when, when you look at, that's your dash. I mean, that doesn't yes. look like a stand. Is there anything, before I switch to a couple of your other components, anything special you want to say about the dash? The, the dash, the live dash that you see there gives you all, you know, one of the things that, that people that are used to electric bikes talk about is where's the display, where's the button. Um, it's where, how can I change ride modes, et cetera. And we're, we're all, we're controlled by an app, but you don't need the app to ride the bike once you've set your ride mode. On the screen that you see there, you've got a battery indicator on the left. You see the floor, four blue lights, which are your head, your daytime riding light uh, display. And then you've got a speedometer on the right. You know, it's really, uh, it's clean. You've got the gear shift on the right hand. You've got the uh, throttle on the left hand, which also controls the light switch. And then it's got, if you can ride a bike, those are regular hydraulic disc brakes right there. That's your hydraulic brakes. Interesting. Hey, Audrey Foley asks if there is a, a central mass location where that can be seen. I think you said Nashua was the closest. Uh... Nashua is where our, our um, East Coast office is. I would have to check with Jerry um, to find out where the best location in central mass would be. Okay. How about how about this again? Oh, high, te it, high technology riding light. What LED. Do you think of that? Yeah, that's an LED light light pipe. Uh, um, that's our daytime riding light on our G4i and our G4i Plus. You know, we talk about two levels of illumination on the bike. One is a UC me, and one is an ICU. And that daytime riding light, just like a safety feature on on a car. The daytime riding light allows others to see you even in all kinds of different um, brightness conditions outside. And then we also have accessory lights that that um, function as the ICU light. Yeah. Now, the one thing we haven't talked about um, is helmets. I'm sure that you do condone the use of helmets. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a motorized vehicle. It's, you know, it, it's one of those things where we really struggle when we do uh, public events, you know, we've got people that are, are, are bringing us their, their kids and they're saying they know how to ride a bike. And I'm like, well, it's really an electric vehicle. It's, it's you know, we look at 16 yep. as kind of that limit saying, you know, it, it's an electric vehicle. And Eric, I'm sure you'd agree that, um, I, I don't know whether you've heard of the Cape Cod Rail Trail, which is, you know, 30 miles long, one of the premier trails in the country. But there are, it wasn't all built at one time. So there are segments of it where there are roots starting to pop up. And um, I know from experience that you could be driving along at 12 miles an hour and you hit, you hit some bumps and yep. you can be the best driver. But I've seen animals run across the path. And uh, those, those paths are great. I ride on one, I ride on the Loose Line Trail here in Minneapolis, which is a rail to trail. Um, so that should hopefully maybe answer some questions crushed limestone, crushed gravel. Um, we're, we're, we're okay on that. I ride with the mud guards on mine. The challenge we have there is when I, when I leave my, when I leave work between, you know, five 30 and six, 
that's when everybody is everybody's out walking their dog they're out on the they're they're jogging on the trail so it gets a little bit it gets a little bit congested so it's a matter of making sure that you're riding in a safe manner and i believe um one of your uh one of our viewers earlier had talked about it's really about if you ride in a safe manner, they're going to let you ride wherever you are. Right. You know, that, was, that, was, that was Monica. She hit it yep. right on the head. Yeah. Yep. You know, yep. and, and that's the big you. thing. That's the really big thing. And the, and, and there's a, a, pro, a point of personal pride um, that I talk about when I'm, you know, we're passing, you know, I'm dressed for work and I'm passing these guys that are out in their spandex and, and they're all ready to go. And I just, and I just kind of pedal by them and they don't hear the motor. And I just, like wave and say have a nice day and i just keep on going so i feel like i'm, I'm 18 again which i'm just you, definitely not 18. one thing that you don't want to see is agami or me in spandex <laughs> even, even if would, they even if they gave it to us free of charge i'm yeah. gonna have to trust you guys on that that yeah. would be testing the limits about friction and uh, resistance and all that other stuff now, but, now john it, you talked about the uh, popularity and familiarity of the Cape Cod rail trail. Isn't that the bike trail that has stands set up along the way so the bikers can stop and get a can of Chef Boyardee to continue on their journey? Absolutely. It's called Stop and Shop. See, John, John's the only Italian I know, Eric, that eats Chef Boyardee out of a can. So he can make, he can make fun of my Jack Daniels all day long. But, but now, I, now Eric, I have more fans. I have more fans in my Jack Daniels fan club than he's got in his Chef Boy RD fan. Club. They have the pop top cans now. You don't even need a can over, so you can just oh, that's especially great. those spaghetti. And, and you could, you them. know, but Bob, he could throw it on a jet boil and he'd, he'd warm it up right in the can, and it's ready to go. Or you, right. know, or you can eat it cold. I'm sure he's. Figuring, I'm sure he's had it any way that's possible to digest it. Oh, and I would imagine he's already in, he's analyzed the macros, so he knows how many how many proteins and how many carbs he's getting. No, that and... no, that would be Swenson. That would that would be Swenson. Yeah, yeah, John, be, okay. John, and I aren't, we're not in that league. That would that'd be too much thinking for us. Pick Monica out a couple says, more. Believe believe it or not, we're we're heading close to closing time. But pick out a couple more, Eric. Uh, let me take a peek through uh, Central Mass. Um, you know, there's really I, I love seeing the comments about um the mobility mark brought up a comment about he lost the the mobility with his knees and back and he bought an e-bike and he loved it and you know i think back to um i was last year i was working with um a dealer in uh, oklahoma city and he had an 85 year old customer and you know the 85 it, it, it's what makes my day when the 85 year old customer goes for a test ride on the bike and and comes back with just the, we call it the go cycle grin because you know it's interesting he says i feel 70 again and you know and it's you know it's uh, uh, uh. <laughs> you know well, and just, it's fabulous just, just, the, just and, the fact that he or she comes back is a major ex well it's exactly <laughs> right and and it's 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 really it, it it takes those years off it takes the edge off if you you know, you used to ride 15 miles in two hours, and now you're riding 15 miles in an hour and a half. Or now in two hours, I can ride, um, you know, 25 miles. Right. And, and we talked about this early, Bob. You know, people really talk about range, range anxiety. Um, you know, oh, I, this bike has a 100-mile range, or this battery is 50 miles, or whatever, 40 or 60. Or, and, and what I really – and I asked you this question earlier, when was the last time, when you asked me that question, the first thing I'll ask you is when was the last time you rode 25 miles? Because if you've ridden 25 miles, you understand that. And, and, and we've been conditioned that more bigger is better. And what I really want to get people to understand is that it's lightweight, it's clean, it's easy to live with, it's fun to ride, and you can ride it like a bike. And that's the best thing that you can do. And if you're doing 40 miles, Thanks, Monica, Monica's ridden in, in the last uh, two weeks. Yep. If you're doing 40 miles, you know it. 25 miles, you know it. Correct. Because your hands, your wrists, your feet, and your butt know it. Yep. And, and, and that's, that's the big thing. And, and, and more power to those folks that can ride those distances what I would say is you're going to be able to ride further on our, our e-bike than you will on other e-bikes. Um, yeah. 
Look at our audience. The lightweight. Eric, you got to admit, you've probably been on a lot of, done a lot of interviews, but you've never, I don't think you've ever been on one where you've got the audience that's, that is asking you intelligent questions, except for Tim. I don't know what the hell he means by that. Yeah, I, I love it. Even Walter's Walter's looking up well, uh, our Walter's uh, looking dealers. Belmont, Belmont wheel Belmont wheel works and, and uh, covered bridge bikes and Bristol bikes in Bristol. So I appreciate. Thank Walter's found the dealer locator on our website. That's awesome. Um, yeah. That's you know, and we talk about it, and and we talked about uh, the community that you feel and why you know I, I commented that my son is. You know, we've gone, we do a lot of hiking in national parks. And he made the comment when we were in Rocky Mountain a couple of years ago that he said, you know, you never meet anyone that's really rude or mean or no. anyone you kind of come across is just, they're in a really good mood and they're happy. And and Bob and I talked about that as well. It's like, as as my wife and I look for little teardrops, you know, whether it be a, a, a little tab 400 or a, a, the base camp we talked about or things like that. But it's like, I want to be outside. I want to be in front and I want to be able to see what's going on around me and smile and integrate and interact with people. And, and the e-bikes are also a great way to, to get around and interact with people. And, and they put a smile on your face hmm. and that's the uh, best thing about it. Yeah. Well, Tim, Tim owns uh, Tim's RV out in Irving, Mass. And he sells the Intech product line and okay. small, small trailers and stuff. And Tim, I'll, I'll bet every one of your customers would love one of these bikes because he, he's got a tremendous outdoor enthusiast crowd out there and he's he's out he'll tell you the same thing he's out in the middle of nowhere out on route two on the mohawk trail so you don't yeah. find him by accident uh, maybe when you drive down but uh he sells to that to that type of an audience and especially with the folding capability in those small spaces again it's it, it, i can't belabor that point enough you know when you're when you're when you're fighting for every pound in your in your unit it's when you've got two bikes at 60 pounds versus two bikes at 37 pounds, it makes, it makes a big difference because it's how much water do I have? How much other, how many other things can I bring with me? And then you've got the added factor that you can bring it into the unit with you. You can charge it as you're going down the road, you, you know, with your inverters, you um, it's, it's safe, it's secure. It's, it's, and it comes with you. Mm -hmm. You know, I yep. told you earlier today when we were talking to him that we could probably run these shows two or three hours when we get great guests, and you certainly fit into that category. So we're going to have to have you come back. But any Appreciate closing, it, any closing advice or words of wisdom for our fans as they start to evaluate uh, electric bikes? The best thing you can do is is ride it. Ride them. Ride ride the bikes that you are looking for. It's 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 with anything. Is it for everybody? No. Is it for most people? Yes. And and you to know the bike, to know the go cycle is to love the go cycle. And that's that's really the best way that I can leave it. Okay. Cool. John, cool. any closing closing comments? No, I before? just want to tell you, I, you know what? I've got an electric bike and an electric car. And as your son said, um, you know, you meet people that are stopped at rest, you know, water stops. They're cool people. And even today, when I was charging the car today, in order to get down to the Cape to uh, Major's RV this weekend, there's very interesting people that you meet charging your electric cars too. Absolutely. So, you know what? It's we just would. A blind we step. would. The, the, well, that, not, that goes for that goes for RVs in the campground too. I mean, they, they right. just Absolutely. they like the outdoors. They like the socialization. They like learning new yep. things from each other, and and they trust each other a lot more than most people in society today. It's it's amazing what you can learn when you open your ears and close your mouth and listen and talk to people and and just kind of experience people. Because I had made this comment to Bob earlier. I travel around the country, and I just love walking into new places and and sitting down and striking up conversations with people I would never experience if I weren't out and about. And right. e-bikes right. and RVs are both great ways to do that and meet more people. Right. We right. want to thank you, Eric, and thank Thanks, our guys. sponsor, Lee. Thank our great, I'm going to, I'm going to play the final commercial and then we'll launch, go to the and, closing. Um, um, you've got Eric's address. Eric, you'll take, you'll respond to emails, right? Absolutely. Right. Because this is a good audience and uh, you are a great guest. And uh, look at even our even our audience says here, awesome show, great guest. We need more of these guys. And I appreciate uh, the opportunity to speak to your audience. And like I I'd said when I posted it, two things I absolutely love: RVs and e-bikes. Yep. And special thanks to Bill Self for recommending you for our guest. Absolutely. Okay. 
Okay, so I got great. you all set up to just it's press the, right the button. Thing. All right, just press the button, Bob. <laughs> we want to thank Bob Zagami and Nervda for inviting us to sponsor their fall into winter dealership sponsor program. And we want to introduce ourselves. This is Brian and the sales team here at Lee's Auto and RV Ranch. We want to welcome all the Nervda members to come visit us to check out our great operation. We have a tremendous amount of inventory from small teardrops to Class A motorhomes. And also we want to introduce you to our service department where we do full mechanical repair and body work, floors, paint work, custom paint work on uh, anything from Class A diesel pushers to small motorhomes. We want to invite everybody down to come say hello. We're family owned and operated. We're here to help you and serve. This edition of RVing in New England was a presentation of the New England RV Dealers Association. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram.